Hi, I'm Tim and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up VLANs in a Grandstream network. Now in this video I'll be using a Grandstream GCC 6011 all-in-one convergence device and also I'll be using a Grandstream GWN 7822P network switch and also a Grandstream GWN 7665 Wi-Fi 6C access point. So we'll be setting up VLANs in the router first, then in the switch, and then the third one in the wireless access point. If you want to know how to set up VLANs, then keep watching this video and I'll show you how. So here we are, and I've logged in to my GCC 6011. Now, depending on if you're using a GCC series from Brandstream, or you're using one of their routers, for example, the GWN 7001, 7002, 7003. Now they should all be fairly similar. So what you need to do is go into the networking section by clicking the networking option here, and you'll see we've got a globe, and then this will take you in to the network section where we're going to create the VLANs on our router or router, depending on what you like to call it and where you're located. So to do this, we need to click on network settings at the left hand side. This will bring the drop down menu. Then what you need to do is select LAN and this will take you into the LAN screen and it will take you directly automatically into the VLAN creation screen here. So this tab at the top, you'll see we've already got a LAN or VLAN in there. And this is the default one. VLAN ID 1 and of course it's our default network. So to create a new VLAN what we need to do is click the add button then in the VLAN ID what you need to do is give it a VLAN ID number. So for example in this case we'll use VLAN ID 2 and then in the name box we'll give the VLAN a name. So in this case we'll call it automation and then for the destination you can leave this selected as all. Now, if you want to click the arrow in this destination box, you can. And if you have multiple WAN connections, what you can do is direct the outgoing traffic for the internet for this particular VLAN to a specific WAN port. So for example, if you have multiple WANs, you can tick the WAN box that you want to use the internet connection for for this particular VLAN, which I find is quite useful. However, I'm only using one WAN connection, so you'll see we've got it ticked by all at default. Then what we need to do is for the VLAN port IPv4 address, enable this option. If you want to use IPv6 addresses, then you would enable that box. However, in this case, I'm just using IPv4. So we'll enable this. And then in the extra options that appear in the IPv4 address, we'll give this a, an IPv4 address, which is for the VLAN gateway for this router. And in this case, I'll use 192.168.2.1. Instead of 1.1, we'll use 2.1, which then corresponds with this VLAN ID of 2. In the subnet mask, enter this. In this case, I'm using 255.255.255.0. Then in the DHCP service, enable this option by selecting the slider. And then in the gateway IP address, just copy and paste the same IP address that's in the IPv4 address box here into the gateway. So copy this into the gateway address box. So you should have 192.168.2.1 which is the same as the IPv4 address here. Then in the IPv4 address allocation range, what we'll do is enter 192.168.2.11. So we have 10 reserved IP addresses for use for static IP address devices. So we'll start the allocation range for DHCP at 2.11 and we'll end it at 2.254. So as you can see, we've got 192.168.2.11 to 192.168.2.11. And then once you've done that, that's all you need to do 
is click save at the bottom. Wait for it to save and it will take you back to the list of VLANs. So now you'll see we've got one VLAN, which is default, two VLAN, which is automation. So now what you need to do is double check that the VLANs have been applied to the VLAN port settings. So click VLAN port settings at the top. And here you'll see we've now got net one through to net eight and SFP nine, all with allowed VLANs of one to two. So they should all be one to two, which they already are automatically by default. So that's fine. So now that you've done that, what we need to do is we can log out of the router and we're going to log into the network switch. So here I am and I'm logged into my GWN7822P new network switch. Now, if you want to have a look at this network switch, I've done an unboxing video, which you'll find on my channel in the recent list of videos. So it's one of the recent videos, so you should find it fairly easily. So if you want to have a look and see what the GWN7822P network switch is all about, then have a look at my unboxing video. What we need to do to set up the VLANs on the switch is go into switching at the left hand side. This will bring the drop down menu as you'll see here. And what we need to do is select VLAN. And then what we need to do to create some new VLANs here, which we did in the router. So we need to create the same VLAN. We'll click add. Then for the VLAN ID, again, we'll use VLAN ID two. So it must correspond with the same VLANs as the router and then click OK. Then once you've done that, you'll see we've got two VLANs, VLAN 1, which is default, and VLAN 2. So what you need to do in the square with the pen icon under the operation column here is click the box for VLAN ID 2. Then in the description, you can rename it. So change it from VLAN 2 to, for example, automation which is the automation VLAN that I created in the router. Then what you need to do is select the relevant ports that you want to put into the automation VLAN. Now to do this, you'll see we've got a port table here with all the ports and their corresponding icons with the port numbers. So all you need to do is select the relevant ports which you want to put into the automation VLAN. So just make a note of which ports are connected to which devices in your network. So what we need to do to put the port into the VLAN is select the relevant port number. So in this case, we'll select port number 13 and you'll see that we've got a T in that port number 13. So what you need to do is click it again so that it puts a U in it. So this is, means it's untagged. So you want to set the port as untagged for whichever port numbers you want to put in VLAN 2, so the automation VLAN. So just put a U symbol by double clicking on the relevant port until you've completed all the ports that you want to put into the VLAN. And they should all make sure that you have a U symbol against them. Then once you've done that, what you need to do is you need to tag the uplink port. So in this case, port number 24 here is the uplink port that's connected to my router. So it has an uplink cable between port 24 and one of the ports on the router. So what we need to do, we need to also tag this port. So this time we're not putting a U against it, but we're putting a T, so we're tagging this port. So just click port 24, if it's the port that's uplinking to your router, and click it once to put a T symbol in it. So you'll see we've now got T. So if you click it again, you'll get a U. Now we don't want a U in it, we want a T. So click it twice and you'll put the T back in it. So make sure that the port with the devices have a U symbol that you want to put in that VLAN, and then the uplink port should have a T symbol against it. Now, once you've done that, you can click OK at the bottom. And then what you need to do then is go into port settings. So select port settings at the top and then select the relevant ports that you put into that VLAN. So, for example, we put 30 port number 13 into that VLAN. So you'll see it's got trunk against it and it's got PVID, which is our VLAN ID of two. So all those ports 
that have got a two against them. You need to edit them by clicking the square and the pen icon. And then what you need to do for the link type in this setting screen is change it to access. So for all those ports that you're putting into VLAN 2, you need to edit each one and change the link type from trunk to access. So once you've done that, click OK and then go to the next port. For example, if port number 10 was in VLAN 2, which it isn't, but, I, but in this example, if it was, you would click on it and also change that to access. But in this case, I'll just put, click cancel. So once you've changed all those ports for VLAN ID 2 to access and don't include the port 24, which is the uplink port. So don't include the uplink port in this, only the ports with the devices against them, you would change to access. So once you've done that for all the relevant ports that you're putting into VLAN 2, change them to access. You can then click save at the top. So once you've clicked save at the top, you can then log out of your switch. So before we end this video, you're probably wondering how to create VLANs in your wireless access points, your grad stream ones, that is. Well, what you would do is log into your wireless access point or each wireless access point, which will take you into the overview screen like you will see here. Then what you need to do is click on SSIDs at the left hand side. Then what you need to do is for the SSID that you want to put into the relevant VLANs, so any clients that connect to the relevant SSID in this list will be put into the relevant VLAN which you allocate to. So for example, you'll see that I've got two SSIDs here, one GWN7665 and one GWN7665-2. So what you would do is click the pen icon under actions so it's the square with the pen in it. Then what you would do is tick the VLAN box, which you can see I've already done. So if we untick that, for example, what you would do is tick the VLAN box. Then you will see we've got a VLAN ID box appeared. So all you would do is enter the VLAN ID number to which you want this SSID, so GWN76652. So any clients using that SSID would then be allocated to VLAN ID 2. So the relevant VLAN number, which you put in this box here. So once you've added the VLAN ID into this box here for the VLANs that you want to allow to access this wireless SSID, you would click save. Then what you do is it's saying you have three changes not applied or however many changes there are, what you would need to do is just click the apply button wait for the data and updates to be applied. Then what you can do is log out of your access point. Once you've done that, you need to go back to the switch and select VLAN under the switching menu. And then in the VLAN menu here, where we created all the VLANs, if you recall earlier, you need to select the VLAN, which you've allocated to the access point SSID. So in this case, if you recall, it was VLAN ID 2. So what we need to do is click the square and the pen icon. And then what you need to do is tag the two ports, one being the one where the access point is connected to and the other for the uplink port between the switch and the router. So as you will see, I've already done this. So I've tagged port 24 by clicking on it and also tag port 17. So port 17 is where the wireless access point is connected to. So all you need to do is click on these once as you'll see. There you go. And for port 24, if we click on it once, you'll see that it's tagged the port that where the Wi-Fi access point is connected and also the uplink port between the switch and the router. So you need to tag those two so that it allows VLAN ID 2 traffic to go between the access point and also the uplink port. So once you've done that, you will click save, wait for the changes to be applied, save successfully as you'll see, and then that completes adding VLANs to your wireless access point. 
So I hope you found this video useful. Hope you were able to follow it easy enough. And thanks for watching. More videos coming again soon. So bye for now.